The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with When. <laughs> a news bulletin for everybody. A news bulletin about everybody's favorite dessert, Jell-O. Now, on every package of Jell-O, you will find one or more exciting new Jell-O recipes, printed clearly right on top. This is done to help you enjoy Jell-O in any number of new, different ways. For Jell-O, certainly a versatile dessert. Just listen to the names of some of the recipes on the Jell-O packages. Pineapple snow, date and celery salad, Raspberry tarts, cinnamon crystal dessert, they're all made with Jell-O, and they're just a few of the many suggestions for varying your menus. So whenever you buy Jell-O, look for these recipes, and you'll be sure to find some delicious new suggestions for serving America's most popular dessert. And no matter how many ways you serve it, you'll always enjoy Jell-O's extra-rich fruit flavor, flavor that comes from real ripe fruit. But always be sure you get the real thing. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the man who has thrown away his medicine, hot water bottle, and doctor's bills, Jack Benny. Hello uh, again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I want to tell you something. I may be okay physically, but mentally I'm a mess. But tonight I'm so nervous that I, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Where's Phil? He didn't get here yet. Why? Thank heaven. What's the matter, Jack? What's wrong? Don, Don, you know that beautiful diamond wristwatch Phil gave me for Christmas? Yes. Well, I lost it. Lost it? Yes, and I just can't bear to face Phil without it. If he comes in and asks me what time it is, I'll swoon. (laughs) Now, Jack, Jack, don't get excited. There must be some way to find it. Uh, When did you last wash your hands? Oh, I've had the watch since then. (laughs) Gee, I miss it. I used to get so much exercise winding it, you know. Oh, it'll turn up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Look at my fingernails. Look at them. I don't see any. Of course not. They're home on the floor. (laughs) I tell you, Don, I'm a wreck. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. Mary, did you put that ad in the paper for my watch like I told you to? Yes, Jack. I brought you a copy of it. What does it say? It says, uh, notice, Jack Benny's watch, lost, straight, or hot. How? When last seen was wearing a wrist. Well, Mary, you should have put a, in a description of it. I did. Here it is. Large mole on minute hand and face needs washing. It's a fine description. Uh, finder, please return to. Return to where? That's all the money I had. <laughs> well, it's a lucky thing I had my name on it. I only hope I get the watch back before Phil gets here. Jack, don't let it prey on your mind. Come on, now, let's change the subject. That's a good idea. Say, Mary, have you started your watch? I mean, have you started your picture for Paramount yet? Oh, sure. I've been on it a whole week now, and I'm getting the biggest kick out of it. Well, I can imagine. You know, Don, this is her first picture. It's called uh, This Way, Please. Well, well, good luck to you, Mary. Thanks, Don. Same to me. (laughs) How's the script, Mary? Have Have you got a good part? Oh, Jack, you should see the director. He's tall, dark, and has the most adorable accent. I know, Mary, but uh, what about your lines? I mean, your part in the picture. And the cameraman. Has he got the duckiest dimples? (laughs) The duckiest? Yeah, he had me behind the camera all day yesterday. Well, how can you make pictures behind the camera? (laughs) Who cares? He's cute. (laughs) Well, you certainly get around. I bet you even met the janitor. I'll say. Brown eyes, baggy pants, and the blondest broom. (laughs) All right, Mary, that's enough. Hey, Jack. What? Have you forgotten about your watch yet? Hey, what are you trying to do anyway? See, now I'm all upset again. Oop, I'll I'll bet that's Phil now. You can't kid me. It's Kenny Baker. (laughs) Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello. What's the matter with you, Jack? You look so calm and excited. Well, you're half right, and that's a record for you. (laughs) 
Well, what happened? Well, if you must know, Kenny, I lost that beautiful wristwatch Phil gave me for Christmas, and I can't find it anywhere. Did you look on your wrist? Yes, Kenny, I did, and it's not there. Well, maybe it's lost. <laughs> yes, Kenny, that's the idea. I lost my watch, and I don't know where to look for it. Gee, if it was a collar button, you could look under the dresser. Oh, I could, huh? <laughs> Yeah, and if you were an old maid, you could look under the bed. <laughs> well, I won't even answer that. Jack, your watch will turn up. Now, take it easy. Gee, if that's, if that's Phil Harris, I'll die. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I understand you lost a very valuable diamond wristwatch. Yes, I did. Have you seen it? Not lately. Goodbye. <laughs> John, I wish you'd set some jello out in the hall for that guy. We might trap him. Playboy. <laughs> good, especially without your leader. Say, Don, Don, while the boys were playing, did anyone come in or call about the watch? No, and stop worrying about it, Jack. You're too sensitive. Well, of course I'm sensitive. Yeah, Jack wouldn't even bait a fish hook without giving the worm ether. <laughs> well, I certainly wouldn't. Believe me, do you ever notice the look in a worm's eyes when you're about to put him on the hook? He just seems to say, take it easy, bud, not through the vertebrae. <laughs> <laughs> People don't realize it. You know, Jack, I had a pet worm once. Gee, I miss him. A pet worm? What happened to him? He ran away with an apple. Oh. <laughs> now, that's the trouble with worms. You can't trust them. I never saw one yet that wouldn't turn on you. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> <laughs> but they're smart, though. You know, you know, I knew a worm once that used to get up late just to fool the early birds. Oh, maybe he didn't know about daylight saving time. Oh, yes, he did, Don. Yes, he did. <laughs> You'd be surprised how clever those little fellows are. They might wiggle around like they're doing nothing, but believe me, they're thinking, thinking all the time. <laughs> yes, sir. Hmm. Answer the phone, Mary. Maybe it's news about the watch, will you? Okay. Hello? Yes? Yes. Yes, he did. Mary, what is it? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, he'll be very happy. That's all that's on his mind. What a relief. He's right here. Yeah. It's for you, Don. Mm. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yes, madam, you can always tell genuine Jello by those big red letters on the box. Fine time to call up about that. Yes, yes, you will find that it tastes twice as good as ever before with its six delicious flavors... Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Orange, lemon, and lime. You're welcome, madam. Goodbye. Don, I wish you'd keep your romantic affairs off of this program. 
But it was business. Oh, business, sure, with you gushing all over the phone. And at your age, too. <laughs> Telegram for Jack Penny. Hey, maybe that's good news about the watch. See who it's from, Mary. Uh, here, boy. Gee, I hope it's... Uh... Jack is from your father. Oh, Dad, uh, what does he say? Uh, dear son, is your watch insured or should I worry, too? <laughs> Good old dad, always so practical. Yeah. So, Jack, I just happened to think, uh, to think of something. Uh, let me see. Uh, were you in any restaurants yesterday where you might have left your watch? Huh? Uh, you're blushing, Don. That's the strawberry going on. Go ahead. <laughs> What did you ask me? What did you ask well, I, me? I asked you, Jack, if you were at any restaurants yesterday where you might have left your watch. Don, I always have enough money to pay my check. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, where you could have mislaid it. Well, let's see. I had lunch at the Biltmore and dinner at the Ambassador. And... Come in. Uh, uh, pardon me. Does Mr. Jack Benny broadcast from here? Yes, I'm Jack Benny. What is it? Did you possess something yesterday that you unpossesses today? <laughs> Yes, yes, my diamond wristwatch. What do you know about it? Nothing except I found it. You did? Oh, oh that's yeah, well. Now, Jack, get the watch well, get hey, there. that's a load off of my mind. Give it to me. Now, wait a minute, son. Wait a minute. First, we's going to have a financial skirmish. <laughs> oh, naturally, a reward, a reward, yes. Now, uh, uh, what uh, would you consider a fair amount? Well, you just shout out some figures and I'll hop on one. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, let me see. Uh, shall we say $10? Inflate that. <laughs> well, uh, maybe I can... Maybe I can do a little better. Uh, wait, suppose I make it 12 and a half. Whee! Listen to them fractions. <laughs> well, look, what do you say to $15? Is 15 okay? Confidentially? Uh-uh. <laughs> Now, hold on. You don't own the watch. You just found it. I got it, ain't I? <laughs> oh, Jack, you were so anxious to get the watch back. Why don't you give him what he wants? All right. How much do you want? Well, $50 would make tomorrow Christmas. <laughs> All right. I'll give you $50. There goes my vacation, folks. <laughs> I'll make you out a check right now. You ain't going to give me no check. <laughs> well, let's not argue about it. I'll give you cash. Mm -hmm. Wait till I open my pocketbook. I'll have to oil that. Oh, look. A butterfly flew out of Jack's pocketbook. That's a moth. All right, young man. Here's your money. Thank you, sir. Here's your watch. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, by the way, young fella, where did you find Mr. Benny's watch? In a restaurant. Oh, yes, yes. The Ambassador. No, sir. This was the Acme Hot Dog Parlor. <laughs> That's right, that's right. I stopped there on my way to the Ambassador. I, I went in to get a cigar. You was eating when I seen you. <laughs> I was not. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, young man. And thanks very much for finding my watch. You know, you must be pretty good at finding things. I don't know about that. I never did find Albuquerque. <laughs> Fifty dollars and five cents for a hot dog. Oh, well, as long as I got my watch back. Sing, Kenny.
night sung by Kenny Baker and uh, very good Kenny well it was it was you <laughs> you certainly can hit those high notes say Kenny how can you tell when you've reached your highest note oh I just take a deep breath and when I can see my necktie I quit <laughs> well that's a good system and besides I ought to have my head examined for asking you and now uh, ladies and gentlemen they... Jack here comes Phil oh well, remember, everybody, not a word about the watch. I don't want him to know what happened. Hello, Phil. Hello, Jack. I'm terribly sorry I'm late. I overslept and I had a flat tire. At the same time? Well, well. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> but it's all right, Phil. That can happen to anybody. Gee, aren't you mad? No, no. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you're late. Say, what is this, anyway? Don't tell them, folks. It's... Oh, Jack, what time is it? Now, Mary, I told you. Oh, that... what's the matter? You got a back, didn't you? Now, cut it out. What's all the excitement, Jack? Well, I hate to break it to you, Phil, but the cat's out of the bag. I may as well tell you. I lost the watch. What watch? <laughs> what watch? The watch you gave me for Christmas. But I got it back. Oh, that's good. Hello, Kenny. Hello. <laughs> And after the way I worried. Oh, well, on with the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our dramatic offering tonight, I mean our PSD resisting, uh, we will attempt to solve the baffling mystery which we began last week entitled Death at Midnight. Once again, I will be Captain O'Benny, as fearless a bloodhound as ever sniffed a clue. Phil Harris will be my assistant sniffer. And Mary Livingston will be Mrs. Crotsmere, who was suspected of murdering her husband, played by Kenny Baker. You bore me, blue coat. Watch out or I'll drill you. I'm practicing my part, folks. I see. Kenny, uh, why are you laying down on the floor? I'm practicing my part, too. Well, don't get stepped on. I won't. I got a red lantern on my chest. Oh. Hello? Episode of Death at Midnight. We'll go on immediately after the next number. Play, Bill, and if any of the boys make a false move, I'll shoot. I'm practicing too, folks. <laughs>
was Dardanella, I think, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now for our play, Death at Midnight, or Can't You Hear Me Callin', Caroline. As you may remember, last week, Mr. J. Wellington Crocksmere was found murdered in his den. His wife was in the room at the time, but claimed she had nothing to do with it. Captain O'Benny was called in, but up to now he was unable to get anywhere with the crime or Mrs. Crotsmere. <laughs> the latter causing him considerable annoyance. As the scene opens, we find Detective O'Benny and Sergeant Harris at police headquarters. Curtain. Music. Is that the phone cap? It ain't the good humor, man. <laughs> I'll answer. Hello? Police headquarters. Captain O'Benny speaking. Help! Help! Come over at once. I'm going to be murdered. Get away from that phone or I'll let you have it. Help! Help! All right. Goodbye. <laughs> What's wrong, Cap? Oh, some family spat. Well, we got to settle this Crocksmere case first. Anything new on it? No, but I got a hunch there's a man in the case. You know that saying? Cherchez la femme. <laughs> Hello, police headquarters. Hello, Cappy. This is Mrs. Crocksmere. Yes? Why don't you come over and investigate my husband's murder? It's no use. I can't find any evidence. Well, drop in anyway. I'm lonesome. Okay. You like tea? Yes. Well, have a cup and come over. <laughs> I'll be right there. Hmm. Come on, Sarge. We gotta get over to Mrs. Crocksmere's right away. I think she's guilty and ready to crack. Where's my gun? In your coat. Where's my handcuff? In your vest. Where am I? In your pants. Fine. <laughs> and we're all set. Let's go. Here's the place, Sarge. Come on, open up. On frame, monsieur. Hello, Fifi. Where's Mrs. Crocksmere? L.A. de la Chambre, a côté L.A. sur repos. Oh, qu'est-ce que c'est, huh? <laughs> I thought so. Make a note of that, Sarge. Voulez-vous? <laughs> now, listen, Fee. My name is Fifi. Well, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> you get Mrs. Crocksmere down here, toot sweetie. Okay, Toot. Here she come now. Good evening, gents. What's all the commotion? Oh, hello, Mrs. Crutzmere. I'm here to find out who killed your husband. Oh, let's not talk shop, Skippy. <laughs> come over here on the sofa and sit down. None of that, Mrs. Crutzmere. None of that. I represent the long arm of the law. Well, put it around me and relax. <laughs> I haven't got time for that. I have. <laughs> Sergeant, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Not yet. <laughs> oh. Now, listen, Mrs. Crossmere. Your husband was murdered, and as long as you won't talk, you were the only one at the room at the time. There's only one way to solve this. We'll reenact the crime. You mean I'll have to shoot him again? Quiet. I'll find out my own way. Go get your gas. I got my gas. What? I got my gas. Good. Then let's go get it. I mean, let's get going. Now I'll be Mr. Crocksmere, and you stand over there and fire at me. But, Cap, she's liable to kill you. Don't worry. Go ahead and shoot, Mr. Crocksmere. I got my bulletproof vest on. Okay. Out! Doggone, I forgot to button. <laughs> Make it out of that, Sarge. One, two, button your vest. <laughs> now I'm going to get to the bottom of this, Mr. Crosshair. You murdered your husband, you might as well admit it. I told you I bumped him off. Don't evade the question. <laughs> Come clean now. All right, then, I didn't do it. That's a lie! <laughs> Listen, you. Oh, I'm nuts. I'm going home. Lay down, Kenny. Death takes a holiday. Come on, sister. No wisecrack. 
Hey, Sarge. Yeah, Cap. Let's give her one more chance to confess. If you don't do it this time, we'll give her the third degree. Look out, Cap. Look out. What was that? Someone threw the butler through the window. <laughs> the butler? Yeah, and there's a note in his hand. A note? What does it say? It says that Jell-O is the finest tasting gelatin dessert in the world, and every day millions of people eat it. Hang on to that message. It must be a cold. <laughs> Do you know anything about this, Mr. Crossmere? What are you torturing me for, Cap? I told you I killed him, didn't I? I couldn't stand it any longer, so I shot him. I shot him dead. Aha! I knew you'd break down. <laughs> now, why did you murder your husband? I killed him because I loved him. You loved your husband? No, the Iceman. <laughs> oh, so that's it, eh? Why didn't you kill the Iceman? Wait till you look in the ice box. That's all I want to know. Slap the braces on her, Sarge, and let's go. Wait a minute. Hold everything. No one move. Come in. Pardon me, but I'm looking for a guy by the name of Jack Benny. I'm Jack Benny, but you'll have to wait. I'm right in the middle of a play. Well, I don't know anything about that. Have you got a diamond wristwatch with a platinum band? Yes. Bill Harris gave it to me for a present last Christmas. That's the one. Hand it over. Now, wait a minute. Who are you? I'm from the credit jewelry store, and the payments on that watch haven't been kept up. <laughs> Oh, when was the last payment made? A week after Christmas. <laughs> now, come on, give me that watch. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, Phil, Phil. Good night, folks. <laughs> Phil, Phil, Phil. Come on, give me that watch. Well, here it is. Of all the cheap, low, four-flushing... You better play, boys. By the most contemptible, humiliating thing I've ever heard of to give me a watch. <laughs> There's one dessert that always gets a grand reception. Just listen to this. It's ice cream, the creamy, luscious kind made with Jell-O ice cream powder. Ice cream made this modern way is rich and mellow, and you make it more quickly, more easily, and much more economically. For with Jell-O ice cream powder, you actually use less cream and get more ice cream. And you make it right in the freezing trays of your refrigerator. Or you can use an ordinary hand freezer and get the same marvelous results. Just combine Jell-O ice cream powder, milk, some cream and sugar, and soon you'll have a quarter and a half of smooth, velvety ice cream with that real homemade flavor. One package of Jell-O ice cream powder makes a quarter and a half of ice cream, twice as much as most other such products you can buy. Jell-O ice cream powder comes in five flavors, rich chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, lemon, and maple. There is unflavored, too, so that you can make ice cream in any other flavor you want. Ask your grocer tomorrow for several packages of Jell-O ice cream powder. This is the last number of the 36th program of the new Jell-O series. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Of course, I'll have to guess at the time. Say, Jack. What? Don't worry about the watch. Oh, it isn't the watch, Mary. It's the principle of the thing. Besides, I gave that fella fifty dollars for finding it. That Phil Harris of all the mean, deceitful, false friends. Uh, that good I've night, ever, folks. I've ever. Heard. The Jello program comes to you from Hollywood over the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.